So it was my wedding ceremony on the 26th, you see? Ugh, my old hag of a co-worker ruined my special day. But of course she had to come here, didn't she? This old hag of a co-worker would be referring to me now, would it? O-M-G. <laughs> Oops, my bad. I accidentally messaged you, Hilda. I'm a bit careless sometimes when it comes to messaging the person I need to contact. That old hag comment? It was just a joke, don't worry about it. <laughs> Please don't take that comment too seriously. <laughs> Sabrina, how can you make such a fool of me like that? I know that you've been calling me an old hag behind my back to people. You don't have to go out of your way to ruin the mood until the wedding, right? I didn't know, but if you can change what happened, would you? Huh? What's this even about, Hilda? Why? I wonder if other co-workers be just as confused as I am. One minute rejecting everything and backing down, then standing in a corner ready to fight. Ah, well... I agree with you on that, as I don't have much confidence in myself, you see. <laughs> Wait, what? What's that even supposed to mean? Oh, honey, you know that everyone wanted to come to my ceremony more than some 39-year-old grandma's wedding ceremony. <laughs> as an old hag, you have to worry about that sort of thing if people can't attend. It must be so difficult being you. No, I have absolutely no worries about that, but what I'm worried about is the complete opposite. The opposite? Uh, what do you mean by that? By all means, Sabrina, you can call me an old hag if that pleases you. I just think that it's a little embarrassing that you're saying I ruined your wedding. Aren't you embarrassed with yourself and how much you flaunt your youth in front of me? Me? What? <laughs> oh, Hilda, I'm not embarrassed at all. Just embarrassed that an old hag like you can even exist. <laughs> how dare you come up with such a crude remark? If you think so... I'm very much loved by our company's boss. After all, it seems like younger women are better in general. You just getting married at the age of 39 is pushing it a lot in terms of age. <laughs> Did the old hag want to get married so desperately and just chose the first man that gave her attention? We just got married in our own time. What's wrong with that? Why do you care so strongly about age and how people do things? Oh, honey, <laughs> it's not just me. Everyone feels that way about age. <laughs> well, it seems you have a bit of confidence if you say to me that you're loved by our boss. But do you think that all of the invited guests think fondly of you? Naturally, of course. My guests are very fond of me. There's no way that more people would show up to your wedding ceremony than mine. If you don't like that and don't want that to happen, why don't you just change the date of your wedding then? Us? Change our wedding date? Are you kidding me? You were the one that wanted to ruin my wedding by putting on the same day as mine. And that was without our permission. Why should I have to change our date? I don't think you'll need to change it at all, to be honest. <laughs> because all the guests will be coming here and said, it must be such an embarrassing thing for you to deal with. You're really getting on my nerves about this, but what if it doesn't go well and, and will that make you sad? Won't you regret all the things you've said and done? Are you okay with living with that? Hmm. I would prefer if you'd just change the date, and with that, please pay for changing the date fee that goes along with it. But don't you think that that's being too self-centered of you? There's no need for us to pay for changing the date. I refuse to go along with this. The world doesn't revolve around you. If you're gonna be like that, then please just cancel your wedding altogether. We're doing no such thing just because you said so, Sabrina. Fine. Then you should prepare to expect no guests to show up so that you're not disappointed. No, I've just finished checking the guest list, actually. Sabrina, when it comes to your wedding, you should be checking your guests' intentions. Do you think I would regret doing this if I didn't know what my guests intended to do? You're saying that even though all the guests are coming to my wedding. It sounds like you're doubting yourself. If you're so worried, then shouldn't you just be worrying about yourself at this time? Well, I'm just happy an old hag like you can still get married. I bet you're celebrating from the very bottom of your heart because you're so relieved about it, right? But of course, I'm getting married too, so I'm incredibly sorry I can't attend yours. So, 
I wish you the best of luck on your oh-so-special day. <laughs> yeah, good luck to you too, Sabrina. Even though I can't make it to your wedding, I hope you can enjoy celebrating your marriage. <laughs> oh, Hilda, today is our wedding ceremonies. <laughs> All of my guests will be wishing the very best for my special day, so your wedding ceremony must look very sad. How do you feel about that? Sad, right? Oh, but never mind that. <laughs> are you alright there? What are you talking about? So you didn't change the wedding date then? Why would we have to change our wedding date? <laughs> if you're so worried about it, why didn't you just take matters in your own hands and change it yourself, you old hag? Oh, I guess that's true. Well, your ceremonies today, I hope you have a wonderful stay celebrating. I'm sorry that I can't attend. Why be sorry? I'm glad that you can't make it, you old lady. You'd ruin the vibe for the whole ceremony. Uh, but you must feel so bummed out, right? Since all the guests are coming to my wedding instead? Okay, who even said that? No one had to tell me that. I just know that's the case. Everyone decided to come to my wedding instead. Okay, so I guess you didn't check your guest list then. Aw, I'm sorry to ruin an old lady's wedding day. It breaks my heart to do that. <laughs> all of the guests who have been invited will come here and your ceremony will be empty, you know? Okay, but all the guests are already coming to my ceremony. What do you mean? The wedding's about to start and I'm getting ready to walk down the aisle. And you're coming in to brag just before the wedding gets underway. All the people from the company have come to my wedding ceremony. Maybe you didn't know that, Sabrina? Now, wait just a second here. <laughs> Is this some sort of joke? How can there be people gathering at your wedding when they decided to come to my wedding over yours? First of all, we don't know what time your ceremony starts at, Sabrina. Also, if our colleagues were thinking of attending your wedding, then why are the seats at yours all empty, huh? Hold up. You're making this whole thing up right now? I'm checking the guest list right now, and no one's shown up yet. Why? What's going on right now? Hilda! I tried to tell you, Sabrina, all the guests have been coming here, and so they couldn't make it to your ceremony. Knowing all this might make you panic a little, but this is just reality, Sabrina. My ceremony's about to start, and everyone that I invited ended up coming here. Do you understand what invited means? It means they said yes and everyone is in attendance in my wedding. Now just wait. I can't believe this is happening. Why are you doing this to me? Did you bribe the guests? What? No, of course not. Why would I bribe my own guests? But I just don't get it. Th th this is so weird. Why are all the guests attending your wedding? I thought all my guests decided they wanted to come to my wedding. Did you do all of this just so you could beat me? You're such an awful person for bribing your guests into attending your own wedding over mine. I have no idea what you're insinuating, Sabrina, but I don't need to bribe my own guests to come to my wedding. Well, you obviously did something like that. This is all too weird. Would you cut it out with all the whys and how weird this all is to you? Obviously, I'm just that more popular than you, Sabrina. Huh? Your popularity is non-existent, though. Okay, well, it is. Look at it this way, Sabrina. You were talking about how great it is that all the guests were going to attend your wedding. And then when you go to check the list, you see that no one has shown up. Don't you think you're being too irresponsible? Don't you see that them not showing up is not the same as giving them a chance to refuse an invitation? No, but I didn't think everyone would refuse to come to my wedding. I thought that everyone was definitely coming to mine. Oh my god. I expected the boss to come to my wedding. He is way more fond of me than he is of you. He might have told you that, my dear, but he's at my wedding ceremony too. Along with everyone else. No way. Are you serious? He cried and was over the moon to hear about my marriage, so I assume that means he's quite fond of me as well. What on earth are you talking about? What is there to be fond of when it comes to a 39-year-old hag? You're completely delusional. He adores me way more than you. But in reality, he's at my wedding ceremony. The boss is kind to everyone, so I can understand why you've been completely misunderstood. When I was a new employee, he was my mentor, so we're quite close. 
He was your mentor? This can't be true. We've known each other for a long time, so it makes sense that he came to my ceremony. There's no doubt about it he wanted to attend mine. Why didn't you check the attendance list way before the ceremony was to go ahead? If you did, couldn't this all have been prevented? No. It wouldn't have. Maybe... Maybe it wouldn't have. I see, so you didn't think anything of it. The fact that I calmly pointed out to you plunged you into a stutter. It's quite an unexpected thing to happen, isn't it? If you think about it a little harder, this whole thing might have been easier for you to understand. <laughs> that, that's enough out of you! Even if I'm blamed for all of this, it doesn't mean you aren't causing trouble! Stop that wedding right now and get everyone over here for mine! What? Why would I do that? <laughs> there is no need for you to have a wedding that's so extravagant! You're having a wedding and so are we, and we hardly have any guests here! And because of that, you want me to cancel my wedding. <laughs> but it seems like you're the ones that need to cancel your wedding since no one has shown up. You don't care about anyone but yourself. How could something like this happen to me? I thought that I could embarrass you by making my wedding on the same day as so no one would attend. I, I, I never in my wildest dreams expected this to happen. How am I completely embarrassed? This is all your fault! You're so cruel! Oh, I, I can never forgive you for this! We're going to have some trouble if you're going to continue blaming me for this. Look, there's nothing you can do and that's all I can say. We literally just about are to start the ceremony and I need to meet my husband at the end of the aisle, so if you'll excuse me. What?! Wait, come back! You can't just run away from this! What am I supposed to do about my wedding?! Sabrina, I don't know what to do about that, but isn't it better to only have a few people attending the wedding? It's not the fault of having such a small group of people there, it's your fault. But I'm so much younger and prettier than you! It would be better for everyone to come to my wedding! Why has this happened to me and not you? Why would anyone want to go to your wedding? Why would anyone want to see an old hag like you in a wedding dress? It would look so terrible! Sabrina, let me be clear about something, all right? Having a bad personality is very much linked to how popular you are. What do you mean by that? You mean I have a bad personality? So that makes me not a popular person? If you were a popular person, you wouldn't have gotten yourself into the situation. <laughs> With just a click of the fingers, you're not popular because you boast about how youthful you are and people despise that. You act like you look down on people. That you're better than everyone. Don't you know that the people around you are sick and tired of that, Sabrina? People are saying they're sick and tired of me? Of course they do. You call the people that are older than you old hags, and you take people's spotlight by planning weddings on the same day as theirs. Isn't that just someone who has a terrible personality? Have you ever thought about what other people think about you? Isn't it better to try and understand how they feel and get along with them rather than putting them down? How about you think about that from now on, okay? How dare you say those sorts of things to me? You're so annoying. I never want to see your face again, you old hag. I'm just going to resign from the company. I want nothing to do with you. It's so cruel that no one would come to my wedding. You're the one that didn't check the guest list before the ceremony. That's your own mistake. <laughs> when you say something like that, I have nothing to say in return. If it weren't for my wedding being on the same day, who would have actually shown up to watch you get married, huh? Oh well, it's too late to say something like that now. If you want to quit your job, then feel free to do so. Really? You're not going to stop me. There'll be no one to have troubles with anymore if you do quit. <laughs> and with that, I hope you enjoy your teeny tiny little wedding ceremony. <laughs> In the end, the wedding ceremony was held in an awkward and empty seated room. The groom side and his relatives were wondering what was going on since no one showed up. When the situation was explained to the groom, he was dumbfounded. Despite being newlyweds, it seemed like the couple's relationship was a bit turbulent. As she'd been totally embarrassed by the whole situation, the next day she tried to quit the company as if she was running away from her problems. Unable to stand the gazes of those around her, she cried and some mysterious drama unfolded in the office. Seemed that she completely disappeared and her colleagues were still taking her leaving as a joke. 
Hilda and the other co-workers don't know where she is and what she's doing now. It would be nice if she wasn't boasting at her young age. However, a person like her seems to never want to learn from what she's done wrong. <laughs> hey there, Millie. I have to say, I was so shocked to see you today. I mean, I was not expecting a family as poor as yours to come walking through my door at all. But I didn't really have much else to do right then, so thanks for helping me kill some time. <laughs> Emily, I can't believe that you have the guts to message me like this after what you did. I don't know what you mean. I was just protecting my store when I saw you reach for some of the products. We can't just let any old riffraff come inside and touch all our precious jewelry, you know? Especially some shabby poor people like yourselves. That's why I kicked you all out. You didn't belong in a store like mine. I was only doing my job of protecting our products from less than savory customers. How dare you talk to me as if I did anything wrong when you all were the people who went somewhere you didn't belong to in the first place. If you thought I was going to go easy on you just because we used to be classmates, you really don't know a thing about me. I don't believe this. You know we all went into that store to help my mom celebrate her 60th birthday. Do you realize that you completely ruined her day when you kicked us out? Not only that, but while you were throwing us out, you made me fall and rip my dress. Well, it sounds to me like all I did was remind you of your place in this world. And just what was that supposed to mean, huh? Oh, please. I know your parents own some kind of factory or something. But I also know that it's in some little podunk town and that you're just another nobody on the assembly line. My store is the last place you should have thought about going into. We hold some of the finest pieces designed by expert craftsmen from all over the world. We're just as much of a gallery as we are a store. And I know that you don't even have enough money to afford touching one of those pieces. So the moment I saw your finger touch the middle of that necklace chain, I knew I had the green light to throw you out. That doesn't even make any sense. Do you really still think that you were totally justified in doing that? Justified? <laughs> And just why would I have to even justify myself? If anything, I was doing you a favor by reminding you of your place. <laughs> now look, I'm very aware that my parents don't own some huge corporation or anything. But they've owned that factory for years and have attracted skilled employees that have netted them loyal customers. I think it's an amazing success that you're only judging from the surface. Oh please, don't you try and talk to me about skilled workers. Besides, they're probably just a bunch of old geezers who couldn't get a job doing anything else. It's less of a factory and more of a retirement home. And it's no wonder your business does so poorly if that's all you hire. They can barely even work. Do not insult all the great employees that I work with at the factory. I'm not insulting anyone. I'm just telling the truth, that's all. You're hiring people on death door, and that's probably why your business is about to go under. And if your parents are running a store as stupidly as that, then I'm sure your sense of how things are going is even worse. But then again, your parents are poor too, so I guess there was never any point in expecting anything great from them. <laughs> hey, I saw you open my messages. They're all marked as red. Don't ignore me. You answer me right this second. Why would I want to carry on a conversation with someone who's doing nothing but insulting me and the people that I care about? I already told you that I'm not making fun of anyone or anything like that. I'm just telling you the truth about your situation. Really? Because all you've been doing is calling my parents and I dumb and poor. And just what did we do to make you this mad at us anyways? Why do you hate us? Oh, I don't hate you at all. It's more just like I think it would be better if you never existed. Why would you say something like that? I say it because ever since we were little, you've always had just the absolute worst taste in what was fancy and what wasn't. I remember in art class, you would always score way lower than me. And then in other classes, you would be making such a racket on the keyboard that I could just couldn't concentrate on anything at all. Plus, you were always doing all those stupid little brain teasers in class and were a total nerd. I've never met someone so nerdy, so weird, so 
brainy before in all my life. That's why I wish you never existed. Are you kidding me? Is that really the reason you're going to give me? What of it? You have a problem with any of what I just said? When I saw you come into my store today in those shabby clothes, it brought back years of resentment towards you. That's why I ended up kicking you hard when I did throw you out of the store. I guess I just let my anger get the better of me. But you were the one who was totally underdressed for my store. You were the one who should have known better. I don't know why you insist on talking down to me as if I was the same person from high school. In fact, I bet that I have a much nicer standard of living than you can even imagine. You don't have to lie to me, you know. I know who you really are deep down. For example, knowing you, I bet you couldn't even hack it in your parents' factory. You probably found some way to work from home and you've been doing that ever since, just so that way you don't have to go outside. So maybe you should think about just who it is you're talking to before you open your poor ignorant mouth. What is even the point of talking to you if you're going to spin every little thing that I say into another way to call me poor? Besides, I'll have you know that the clothes I was wearing today were designed by my sister who works in the fashion industry. I don't, really don't think a poor person could have afforded the outfit I had. Are you trying to compare your sister to a real fashion designer? I remember your sister. And she was even more stupid than you. Not to mention she couldn't draw to save her life. Do you really expect me to believe that she's some bigwig fashionista or something? Your clothes looked about as poor as you are. And if they were handmade clothes from your sister, then it explains why the material was so cheap and why it rips so easily. Or was that all part of your sister's design? <laughs> or maybe you're just lying about your sister and you actually stole those clothes. I wouldn't put it past you. Are you kidding me right now? What is your deal, Emily? What are you talking about? I don't have a deal, Millie. Ugh, I'm seriously so sick of having to put up with you. What I was wearing was the first outfit that my sister ever designed and produced. I didn't steal anything. Besides, you were the one getting physical with potential customers before throwing them out. Well, just know that you're not going to get away with this. I'll report you. And just who is going to listen to what some poor little nobody has to say, huh? You need to wake up and face reality, Millie. Nobody cares about what someone like you has to say about someone so far above them like you should have never walked into my store today. And you certainly should have never tried to touch any of the merchandise. That's why I really had to kick you out. But if you're looking for someone to blame for all of that, you can only turn to yourself. It's so tiring having to explain over and over again to a stupid person about just how stupid they really are. And the fact that you didn't know you were going to be thrown out for what you did just proves to me how stupid you really are. If only you were just a little bit smarter, that I wouldn't have to waste so much time repeating myself to you. Except you do realize that one of the customers you threw out was a CEO, don't you? <laughs> are you still trying to scare me? I don't know if I'd call this owner of some crappy little country factory a CEO. It's about as truthful as saying that your sister is a fashion designer. <laughs> You're just a weird, nerdy little shut-in who doesn't know anything about the real world. You can say that all you'd like, but I know that family is full of people who are way better people than you. And not that money matters for every little thing, but my family is not poor. In fact, I think it's fair to say that we're actually quite wealthy, actually. My parents work really hard to run their business and even manage to send both my sister and I to college. And thanks to all the support from them, my sister was able to pursue her dream of being a fashion designer. She always used to keep herself up so late throughout the night working on her designs that it's clear she had real talent for it. And maybe I don't have as clear a vision as my sister of what I'd like to do for the rest of my life, but I have skills too. It's true that you were always better at art than me and did have a sharper eye for aesthetics, but that's why I'm more than happy to step back and cheer my sister on. Not only that, but every single employee that works for my parents is a skilled and experienced veteran of their craft who all have my respect for what they do. And yet, you have the gall to insult every single person in this world that I have respect for. I won't forgive you for this. I'll make you pay, Emily. All I'm hearing are the empty threats of a sore loser who knows that the words are going to be the only thing they'll have to use against someone so much better than them. <laughs> I can't believe you would trick me the way that
that you did. What is it now, Emily? What could you possibly want to talk to me about now? Don't you try and play dumb with me, Millie. I had no idea you were getting part of the ring collection from your mom's workshop. And why would you and your mom dress up as poor people to visit my store? You totally had me fooled. It's as if you were trying to get yourselves kicked out because you knew that I would get in trouble for it. And now I am getting in trouble. I heard your mom is canceling her contract with our store. Well, you better tell her to knock it off. And just who do you think you are to tell my mom what to do when you keep looking down on us like this? But it isn't fair. You two tricked me. If I knew who your mom really was, then I would have never treated you two that, the way that I did. I thought she just ran some tiny little place out in the middle of nowhere. Well, you're right about that. It is a small place and it's quite remote. The building looks quite shabby and run down from the outside, and it's true that most of the staff are stubborn old people. But they're also all imbued with pride and experience for their craft that shines through in every single piece that they produce. You said so yourself, that your store only takes some of the best works from some of the world's leading jewelers. Well, I'm proud to say that my mom's workshop has many of those people working in it. And yes, you've insisted on continuing to insult my family's work and referring to the place as an old folks home rather than a business. Well, all it took was me mentioning all that you said to my mom, all that you said to her about her staff, for her to decide that she didn't want to do business with your store anymore. But I was only being honest. I mean, you said so yourself. It's all old people there. It's because you can't get over your age that my mom is choosing to end doing any business with you. And even if you weren't constantly putting down the staff that she cares about so much, you still threw out the owner of one of your partners from the store. So of course it's natural that that person wouldn't want to do any more business with you. And until you admit what you did was wrong and apologize for it, you're not going to be seeing any more pieces from my mom's workshop. I'm afraid that these people are quite set in their ways and won't budge when it comes to this. <laughs> do you really think I'd fold for you all so easily? You think you're the only jewelers in the world? I'll just find people who do what your workshop does, but for cheaper. It's time for all those geezers to go into retirement and for a new generation of artists to step forward. So if me doing this drives them to work less, so be it. We just got a new company president and she's always talking about driving our business in a new direction. So if you really thought that you could take us down just like that, you're sorely mistaken. Besides, the store security cameras never caught me kicking you out, so there's no real proof that it happened. No one is ever going to believe you about any of this. I don't care about any of that. I was just letting you know why my mom made the decision that she did. She also wanted me to tell you that you've made a powerful enemy with us and that you have no idea what's coming your way. You know, I rarely see my mom get this mad. Normally, she's just a patient, kind woman. Well, good luck punishing me for anything when you don't have any evidence of it. It'll just be your word against mine, and then I'll win. Um, hello. I'm not quite sure what to do in this sort of situation, but my boss gave me this phone number and told me to call you. I was in the middle of work and was told that I would need to apologize to you. But I'm not even sure who you are, so what do I need to apologize to you about? Oh, I take it you must be Emily. Well, I happen to be the one who called your boss to report the incidents that happened when I tried going into your store the other day. But I don't get it. I've never seen my boss this panicked before. She wouldn't even listen to what I was trying to tell her. And yes, I assume I still haven't introduced myself yet. My name is Julia. I assume just from that that you've heard of me, right? Wait a second. You mean Julia? As in that Julia? As in the world famous jeweler and trendsetter Julia? Well, I prefer to just think of myself as a jeweler and designer, but yes, I suppose those other words do apply to me as well. If you'd like, I can stop by and bring you my business card if you don't believe me. I am so, so sorry. I had no idea that my boss had given me the phone number for THE Julia. It's truly an honor. And I would also just like to say how sorry I am for the misunderstanding between us yesterday. Well, while I do appreciate the apology, I'm more curious about why you thought it was okay to treat two potential customers the way you did in the first place. I'm really sorry. It was really just a big mix-up. I truly had no idea who you were. And I had never treated any customer before you in that manner. I swear it was just a freak accident. But that's a lie, isn't it? There was another time when you threw customers out before this. 
Does the name Millie ring any bells? Oh, did you hear about Millie from my boss? Well, you see, we've actually been friends since we were young, so I didn't think she was really there to be a customer. And she was wearing horrible clothes and just didn't look like she belonged in the store at all. Not only that, but she was about to put her grubby hands all over your jewelry. And your pieces have always been my favorite. So I was just trying to keep them clean for the real customers. I just didn't want someone like Millie leaving any smudges or scratches to our valuable pieces. I see, so that's your version of events then, is it? Well, I suppose that settles it then. From this day on, I no longer am going to do any business with your store. Wait, hold on. J J Julia, you can't be serious. Of course I am. You disrespected someone that I have great admiration for. I simply can't do business with people who treat others like that. You don't mean to say that you have a great admiration for Millie, right? Of course I do. You might not know this, but Millie happens to be my older sister. Wait a second. You mean you're the same Julia that could barely even draw when she was little? That's right, and I understand from Millie that you had some very strong opinions about me. Although you weren't entirely wrong, it's true that I struggled in my first art classes, and many of my past designs were rejected when I submitted them. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. I'm here to stand up for my little sister. She may not have the mind of an artist, but when it comes to math, she's one of the brightest people that I've ever seen. And she does things I never even knew you could do on a laptop. I'm sure that the day is going to come when even I get jealous of her success. But I just use those feelings to help push myself further into my artwork. One of my latest ideas has very much been a back to basics approach. I looked over some of my oldest designs from when I was in high school and the rich mix of colors and patterns brought back a deep sense of nostalgia for me. I've been looking for something unique and revolutionary, and when I created a test piece and gave it to my sister to wear, she was overjoyed with it. Call it childish, but I knew that if my big sister liked it, that meant it was good. And yet, you not only insulted and disrespected my sister, but you also ripped my new design. I can't forgive you for any of that. But wait! You can't cancel your contract with us because of that. That was personal and this is business. I've been thinking about a lot lately. I don't want to think personal feelings should get in the way of business. And I know that losing this contract is going to affect my mom's business too. But my mom stood by me and told me that I needed to make the decisions that would allow me to sleep at night. It also helped that she was furious with you. More angry than I've ever seen her before, to be honest. Wait, Julia. Please, surely we could talk this out. I think we can both see that this is just one huge mistake, right? I had no idea about any of this. It's far too late to try and apologize for this now. But I really am sorry. You have to believe me. Please, please don't cancel your contract. I'm begging you. I've already made up my mind, but you can only blame yourself for this. But you don't want to do this. It'll hurt your reputation if you want to work with any other stores, and you'll still have to pay out your end for breaking the contract. Not to mention that your sister could be seen as committing fraud. I mean, she came into my store dressed in a ridiculous outfit and hid who her family was. She baited me into acting the way I did. That's a crime. You wouldn't want anything to fall on your sister, would you? Are you threatening my sister with a lawsuit? Give it your best shot, but I know that you don't have a chance at winning against us. <laughs> Millie? Are you there? Please, you have to talk to your sister for me. She's taking this way too far, and now everyone is blaming me for losing the Julia contract. I mean, that would probably be because it's all your fault that Julia wanted to stop working with your store, right? Of course it isn't my fault. It's all yours and your sister's fault and now our business is falling apart. Not only that, but I'm being served with a fine from my company for damaging potential profit. They're going to fire me and sue me for the trouble that they think I caused them. But I didn't even do anything wrong. This is all your fault. You tricked me and caused all this to happen. You have to pay me the money I need to get out of this. You did this to me. Oh, Emily, so sorry I didn't get back to you. I read all your messages, but I'm just really busy with more important things right now. Don't you lie to me, you little shut-in. 
I know that you're just buying time for yourself. I really don't have any need to do that, though. I mean, you've already been fired and your job is charging you for the damages you caused. Not to mention the lawsuit you're getting from me after you literally kicked me out. But you can't do that! By the time this is all over, I'm going to end up owing people over $100,000! Oh, right. That's quite a large sum, isn't it? Oh, well, you'll still have to pay it. After all, someone needs to accept responsibility for all that's happened. Th 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 this isn't fair! I don't have that kind of money! I am not a CEO or something like that! I guess sometimes I forget normal people can't pay those kinds of fees. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Well, you remember how I always used to be good with numbers in high school, right? Well, I took those skills and honed them over the years, as I learned about the stock market. So yes, I do work from home. But only as an incredibly successful day trader. So you just... invest money for a living? Pretty much, yes. The rest of my family all took over artistically creative paths, but I ended up going into the numbers route. We all stick by each other and help each other out when we need it. But why didn't you ever tell me any of this before now? Why do you think you're entitled to every single detail about my private life after the way you've treated me? No, 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 no. This isn't fair. I'm better than you. I'm not supposed to lose to you. Please, you need to pay off all my debt for me. I know you have the money for it now. Emily, this is not going to happen. But good luck with everything. See ya. <laughs> After that, Emily ended up with a ton of debt thanks to all of her legal fees. Had no choice but to take whatever jobs were immediately available to her to begin paying them down. Since she had a criminal record after my lawsuit against her, however, the only places that would hire her were factories with lots of manual labor. Hearing that she had been fired, my sister decided to begin producing jewelry for the store Emily had previously worked at, much to the relief of the employees under my mom. As for me, I went back to working as normal, investing money and earning a living that way. It's true that I don't meet many people through my work, but I also have more than enough leeway to take a break and spend time with my family if I want. I feel so lucky to have such a tight-knit unit that will always stand up for each other when there's trouble. I may have chosen a different path than the rest of my family, but it hasn't stopped us from being a family one bit. And finally, as for Emily, I only hope that if she ever managed to claw her way out of all that debt, that she'll learn not to judge people based on their appearance. Oh, Madison, I need to speak with you. My mother's long-term nursing care has just been authorized. What are you talking about, Anthony? What nursing care? It's already been decided that I take over the house and all the other things that go along with it. So tomorrow, you're going to quit your job and take care of my mother. That would be great. I don't get what you're saying right now. Everything's happening at such a fast pace that I'm not getting the full story here. Madison, don't be ridiculous. This isn't the time to start playing dumb, you know. I talked to my brother about what to do with my mom. Rather than put her in an aged care facility, it's better to have family who are nearby to take care of her. It's tough for my brother right now, and he's got a child to look after. You need to quit your job as soon as possible and take care of her. Isn't that the most obvious solution to all of this? Why are you trying to solve all these problems when you haven't even consulted me about them? Don't we talk things out first, then work to solve the issue? It seems to me that you're being quite unreasonable towards me. You can't just decide things for me. If you talked to me about this, I would have said I like my job and I want to keep working. I have no prior knowledge of nursing the elderly or anything like that. It would be such a struggle for me. Besides, I only see your mother a couple of times a year, and that's during Thanksgiving and Christmas. Rather than me take care of her myself, it would be easier to put her in a care home where she gets looked after properly by professionals or people with more care experience. What did you just say? <laughs> all your words are just so muddled up that it loses all meaning, don't you see that? This is a family decision, not just yours. I'm already getting her luggage moved into our house today. You've got to be kidding me right now. Really, Anthony? Not kidding, dear. Tomorrow, my mother will be living with us in our house. What's the problem? If something happens, are you afraid that it'll be your fault or something? Yes, but I really do think you're being too pushy right now. You're not considering any of my decisions. Madison, you're a woman, all right? It's not your responsibility to work or anything like that at all. I'm the one who needs to be responsible and earn money because I'm the man of the house. <laughs> Don't you think it's more normal for you to quit your job? 
You're the woman, of course, so it wouldn't look so bad if you did. This whole thing is completely one-sided, Anthony. Are we even going to have a proper discussion about this? This is so cruel. Can't you just listen to how I feel about this? There's no room for discussion. I've already made the decision, so there's no point in complaining about it. So with that, from now on, you're taking care of my mother, and that's final. <laughs> also, just because you need to take care of her, it doesn't mean you can cut corners with the housework, all right? As my wife, it's your duty to serve your husband's family. It's only natural that I ask that of you. Well, you couldn't sink any lower than what you just said to me, Anthony. I thought it was impossible that you'd act like this towards me. It would have been nice if you'd given me the time to talk all this out with you. I guess you're just going to make me do all this now. Oh my god. Today has also been so exhausting. I still haven't finished up at work. I envy you so much right now. You can just laze about at home since you're a housewife. You've got such an easy laid-back life. Just living off the money that I earn and work tirelessly for. With that, I bring that home to you every month. It's like you're a blood-sucking parasite. <laughs> Would you please cut it out, Anthony? Is this what it's going to be like between us day after day whilst you work and I'm here? What do you even want me to say to that? You're the one that wanted me to do this, didn't you? You're the one who wanted me to quit my job and take care of my mother-in-law when I shouldn't be the one who does. Of all things, I can't stand being called a parasite. Oh, come on, Madison. It's all okay. You're a housewife who can be at home and not stress out about anything. I'm the one making money because I need to. Do you really think that I'm not stressed over anything whilst I'm at home? Hey, you've been relaxing at home all this time. So what's there to stress about? I would think that you're having fun, Madison. <laughs> fun? Are you serious, Anthony? The only time I have to relax is the moment when my head hits the pillow and I can go to bed and sleep. You were the person that asked me to take care of your mother in the first place. Of course it was going to be a huge task to take on and a stressful one at that. Also, why are you being so sarcastic when you're saying I'm having fun? Why would you say that when it's not true? But isn't it so nice to be a full-time housewife, my dear? <laughs> you wanted me to quit my job, but you continue with your sarcasm and treat me like crap every day. I'm so fed up with your attitude, Anthony. What if I started acting like that towards you, huh? If I was living a life like yours, it would be so awesome. <laughs> I envy you for only having to care for someone and live off someone else. You're just a human-sized parasite that's mooching off me. So stop being an arrogant woman. Okay. If you envy me so much, how about we try swapping duties so you're at home and I go to work? Whoa, really? For real? I feel so incredibly lucky right now. <laughs> yeah, for real. I'm down to do that. Let's just switch positions. You can quit your job so that you can stay at home, and I'll go back to work and earn money for us. That's such a god-tier suggestion, my dear. <laughs> Do you really think that you'll be able to make enough money to keep us afloat? Oh no. You know what? <laughs> I just wanted to quit my job already. I'll take you up on that offer. <laughs> this is great. You seem overjoyed, Anthony. All right. From now on, you can take care of your mother and the housework. I would very much appreciate that. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> so, I'll just quit my job today, then. <laughs> oh, what? Really? You're going to quit today? Are you sure that's what you want to do? What's up? Do you want to do all of this by yourself or something? <laughs> that's not what I mean, Anthony. When I had to take care of your mother, I just immediately quit my job. Since smashing all this out might not work, why don't you just take a break instead of quitting altogether? It would be better to just take a month off under the care for parents leave that you have. That means I'm only making a half-hearted decision about all of this. <laughs> if I've been given the chance to quit, then I'm going to quit my job and stay at home. Besides, anyone can be a full-time housewife. 
The only thing my mother does is sleep all day. So I don't have a huge amount of work with her. <laughs> I'll have so much free time that I'll have no idea what to do with myself. Yes, that's somewhat true. I suppose it would be fine to just do what you please. Of course, I can't guarantee anything. Having to do housework and look after an elderly person is harder than you think. Yeah, yeah, whatever you say, dear. <laughs> Even if you somewhat try to throw me off the idea of quitting with your words, it's a waste of time. I'm going to quit and come back home. <laughs> Today, I'm going to quit and I'm not looking back. <laughs> Can't take back what I said now. I see. Well then, I'll go back to working like I did before. Will you be able to get back into the workforce so easily, though? You're just a girl! <laughs> I was in a technical position before I quit, so I can go back to it without any problems. You're so hyped up about this now, but you'll soon realize the reality of it all. Don't forget that I advised you on that, alright? <laughs> Madison, what time are you going to come home? Well, I still haven't finished work yet, Anthony. You need to hurry up, finish your work, and come home this instant! I can't do this anymore! It's impossible! Why? Of course you can make dinner for us, can't you? You're talking about dinner right now? Are you trying to mess with me or something? I've come to the conclusion that doing all this work is completely impossible! Don't you get how hard it is to look after someone? I understand everything you're saying, Anthony. However, did you say that you've got a lot of time to do that two weeks ago? It's not like when you were at home, though. Things are entirely different now. I don't think things have changed that drastically from two weeks ago. <laughs> the only thing that's changed in these last two weeks is our duties at work and home, no? That's enough out of you about this! You need to get back home now! I'm tired from working all day. Do you really think I want to come back home and do all the housework as well? Don't you understand that I want you to take care of your own mother? What are you talking about? While you were working, did you not think that it would be better for you to look after her than me since she's your mother? You're not trying to make me do things that you don't want to do, are you? <laughs> but it would be nice if you could help me out. If you asked me for help when you were at home, I would have done that for you. Is that so? I don't remember ever you being at home when I asked for help. You weren't there at all. I knew something like this would come up eventually. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? What are you trying to say? I didn't think you're suited to either housework or taking care of people. I thought it would stress you out to the max. <laughs> you came to that conclusion faster than I could have possibly imagined. If you knew that, then why didn't you tell me? What the heck? I thought I did tell you something along those lines, though. Ah, uh, I guess it doesn't matter anymore. You now get what I'm going through. I'm already so tired from doing so much, Madison. You should be doing what you're good at. Nursing people and doing all the housework are a woman's job, after all. So with saying that, we'll go back to our original roles. I refuse to go back to doing housework and looking after your mother. Excuse me? What did you just say to me? I haven't got a clue what you're talking about. But I'm very active at work and I'm doing well in my job. You look down on me as a useless woman who can only be good at doing stuff at home. To tell you straight, I am needed in my job and I like it. So what are you trying to say? So what's going to happen? Listen to me then. I was happy when you wanted to switch roles as I wanted to continue working. You convinced me to swap with you, and that's what I did. What I didn't need in my life is not to have a job when you told me to quit and take care of your mother. You started all of this. What? Me? What did I even do to you? In fact, until now you've been doing nothing but talk bad about what I'm trying to do and looking down on me as nothing but a slave. You can't do all these things that I did by yourself, can you? Up until now, you've just been throwing commands at me left, right, and center with such a sense of arrogance. Did you think that you could increase the amount of time you've been spending on cheating or something? Huh? What are you bringing up about me cheating? I don't get it! 
I'm sorry, but caring for your mother and doing the housework is harder than you think it is. From the very beginning, I thought that it was something that you couldn't do very well. You couldn't even last two weeks, Anthony. <laughs> That's enough! Stop hassling me so much, Madison! Stop making a fool out of me! It's not funny! I'm good at my job. I just want to go back to how it was before. I'd rather work than be here. I think I'll go crazy if I had to stay at home all the time. You should be able to take care of someone way easier than I would, since you're a woman. Even if it's your own mother. Yes, you should. Soon enough, you'll be nothing but a stranger to me. Do you really think that there's a need for me to take care of her? Excuse me? What do you mean I'll be a stranger? Oh, I forgot to mention this. By the way, you quit your job, right? Say you want to go back now to that job. Do you think you'll be able to go back to it soon? What you're saying is complete and utter gibberish, Madison. Of course I could. I was a competent employee who always went above and beyond to do the best work possible. But when you quit your job, nobody stopped you from doing so, right? What the heck? What's that got to do with anything that I'm wanting to do now, in the present? I've been working non-stop for the past five years. Surely I'll be able to return. Well, that must be such a relief for you. Even if you were to get rid of me, would you be able to live on your own from now on? Huh? Get rid of you? What's that supposed to mean? I just don't feel like dealing with you anymore after the way you've looked down on me as a woman. There's no point in being married, so I was intending on getting a divorce from you. I also have proof of you cheating on me, so I can file for a divorce right away. No, wait, what? Madison? What are you talking about? You seriously think I'm cheating on you or something? I'm also going to file a claim to get alimony after you since you've been having an affair. I would get ready for that if I were you. Now hold up a minute. Al alimony? Divorce? What the heck are you saying right now? You can't do that to me. I'm your husband. Even though I quit my job and switched roles from you, you still would want to divorce me? Aren't you being a bit selfish here? Who's the one being selfish here? I think it's you, you piece of trash. You said you wanted to switch roles, didn't you? Even so, I wanted to go back to the way it was before I had to care for your mother because I wasn't doing so well. Didn't I discuss this with you? What did you discuss with me? I don't even remember that at all. First, I advised you on not to quit your job and to just try and take a break. But you just went and quit, didn't you? That's right, yes. But everything's fine now. There's absolutely no issues. I'm just going to pretend I didn't hear you talk about divorce. If you were going to get a divorce from me, I wouldn't have quit my job. But I told you now that I would divorce you. <laughs> Do I have to keep explaining my reasons to you over and over again? I was waiting for the perfect time to get proof of your cheating scandal, and now that time has come. I'm actually looking forward to divorcing you. What? You're looking forward to it? Are you nuts? But you were just a housewife! Of course. But I wanted to continue working, and then all of a sudden you designated me to being your mother's caregiver when I didn't want to be. You forced me to quit my job. I was desperately running out of it, as it was something so unfamiliar to me, and all you did was look down on me. Then you go and have an affair behind my back. My love for you was officially worn out. What affair are you on about, Madison? There's nothing going on! I guess it's just a waste of time trying to even tell you about how I feel right now. I've got all the evidence I need. Here. My love for you has gone cold and I never want to see your face again. I'm going to divorce you, and I will claim my alimony from you, all right. <laughs> Are you seriously going to go through with what you said? But I want to go back to my job! If you can go back, then why don't you just try to go back? Even though you're saying all this to me, you'll still be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> what about the nursing care for my mom? If I want to go back to work, who will be able to look after my mom? Isn't that a problem that you need to deal with yourself? You're just a nobody to me now, Anthony. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> Why don't you just hire someone to care for her and you go back to work? Please stop using me to solve all your problems. I'm so over it. 
You'll need to hire a lawyer while you're at it and secure the money that you need to give me. The divorce proceedings are definitely going to fall in my favor. Just wait up a second and calm down, so we can talk about all this quietly! Oh, don't worry, I'm calm. I just want what I'm owed by you since you've put me through a lot of hardship. <laughs> Considering how you've treated me so far, it's only natural for me to act cold towards you, isn't it? On that note, good luck, you piece of trash that's got nothing going for him. It's such a shame that you couldn't enjoy your job as a stay-at-home husband. <laughs> In the end, Madison refused to give up on what she wanted, and it seems that she got her divorce from Anthony. After that, one day, he tried to quickly return to work. He was laughed at by his boss and was originally subjected to being laid off. It was clearly told to him that he couldn't return to his original job. He's currently looking for a job while also taking care of his mother. He used his savings to pay for the alimony. That meant he couldn't afford to hire a caregiver and was always super busy. It's said that he's aged considerably in such a short span of time. On the other hand, Madison's enjoying her job again, and it seems she also enjoys living alone. It seems that Anthony was the one that got in trouble after the divorce was finalized. Even though he's only just realized his reality now, it's too late to go back. Hey, Mike, it's been a while, but you still remember me, right? Uh, oh, sorry, I don't think I have this number saved. Who are you again? Are you kidding me, man? You don't have my number saved? I knew who you were right away when I saw your face. Anyway, this is Dave from school. You really don't remember me? You've seen me around recently? I really don't think I remember running into you at all. Well, surely you remember me making you my slave in school, right? I mean, I did it all for your sake, of course. You were such a little wimp, so I took you under my wing to toughen you up. But wow, it's been ages since then. So, what have you been up to this whole time? Well, today is our class reunion, isn't it? Yeah, I was wondering if you were going to mention that. So then, you got an invitation to that too? Because you know that you just can't be breaking into this place without an invitation, don't you? I certainly don't hope that you're not here uninvited. I didn't sneak into anything if that's what you're employing. We're all classmates, so of course I have my invitation. Sorry, is there a point to this conversation, or are we through? Hey, come on, what kind of way is that to talk to such an old friend of yours? I just want to catch up is all. Besides, I don't have anyone else to talk to here, so can't we just put the path behind us and just be friends again? You can start by going out and buying me a pack of cigarettes from the corner store across the street. Your treat, of course! <laughs> I just want to let you know that I do remember you now, and you really haven't changed at all, have you? And just who the heck do you think you are talking to me like that, huh? I remember back when I had you working for me back in our school days, I used to make you call me sir. So why don't you get back to it, huh? You really think that you're going to make me call you sir? You can't be serious. Listen here, buddy. Do you even know what it is that I do for a living? I'm the face of one of the largest firms in our country. But that's just during the day. At nights, I just roll with the toughest cramps in the street. Wow, you sound like something straight out of a comic book, to be honest. That's right. If you don't want to end up as just another background character in my story, then you'll check your attitude and do as I say. You really don't want to have me as an enemy. Everyone who has ever gone against me has ended up on their knees begging for their mercy, but I never showed any. So, what do you think? Are you scared right now, shaking in your boots? Yeah, I'm, uh, quivering with fear. <laughs> that's what I thought. Uh, if that's the case, then you should go out and buy me those cigs. If you keep on waiting any longer, let's just say that you're going to be responsible for whatever I do next. You really don't want to have that on your conscience, do you? You have no idea what I'm capable of. Actually, David, how about you just go and buy your own cigs, huh? And quit bugging people at the reunion like this. Uh, did you not just read a single word that I sent you? I told you that you were my slave back when we were students, and you still are! Are you trying to get me to fight you or something? Alright, I guess I have no choice but to go and get them. That's more like it! And next time, just do what I say without arguing, got it? Hey boss, where did you run off to? The class reunion is still going on and I don't see you anywhere. Oh yeah, really sorry about that. I just ran out to get some snacks and drinks for everyone. But I saw that you bought cigarettes too, right? I didn't know that you smoked. And why did you only buy two packs? 
Tina, did you really see me buy those? I just don't get it. You don't smoke, so what are you buying those things for? Not only that, but even though we're in the middle of such a fun party, you looked so upset from what I could see through the store window. I can really only think of one explanation for all of this. You're being used as an errand boy by someone, aren't you? Wow, I... how did you put all that together? You're like Sherlock Holmes or something. Well, the answer to that is quite elementary. I guessed it all because you bought two packs. Even granting that you had taken up the habit, I guessed that you would still be new to it and would only be buying one pack at a time. But if you happened to be sent by someone else to buy them, then it makes more sense that you would buy two so you don't get sent to go buy any more. Does that sound about right? Okay, that's actually just a little bit freaky how you can do that. I'm curious though, boss. Is it David? You do realize that he belongs to one of our subsidiaries, right? You don't have to take that kind of abuse from him. I know that, but I would never lower myself just to get some petty revenge on him. And I'm sorry, but just what were you doing outside the corner store that I was in? Oh, no, that really was just a coincidence. I happened to step outside of the party to get some fresh air and walk around, and I happened to see you walking into the store. But I don't get why you won't fight back against David. You could probably put an end to his antics if you did. I appreciate the concern, but I would really rather just settle things like this without having to rock the boat too much. Besides, I really don't want to be fighting with someone who works for me at an event like this. Well, sure, but why does he do this to you? Did something happen while you were both students? Yeah, David used to boss me around all the time and was always having me do things for him. I had hoped that after all this time he would have matured a bit more, but he really is the same jerk he's always been. Well, that's all the more reason to just ignore him when he talks to you that way. I know, I know, but he seems to be comfortable talking about the fact that he's got some friends in pretty low places and is always threatening to get violent. I don't want that, and I don't want anyone else getting sucked into that. It's just more peaceful to do it this way. I hope this convinces you that I know what I'm doing when it comes to this guy. Well, I understand the situation a bit more. But are you telling me that you really don't hate David for what he's doing? It's not that I don't dislike the guy, but we're at a party and I want people to be able to enjoy themselves. I mean it when I say that I have patience to wait this out. Things are gonna be fine, okay? Well, if you say so, then I guess I won't say any more. But that doesn't mean that I agree with it. That's okay, I appreciate your understanding. Let's just try and make sure nothing happens to spoil the reunion, okay? Hey, you jerk! You've got some nerve, you know that? How dare you try and feel up my wife? What the hell is the matter with you? Feel her up? I wasn't doing anything like that at all. I was just helping her get up the stairs is all. She was holding onto your arm, I saw it! You really are just scum, you know that? You think my wife isn't able to get up some stairs on her own? Uh, no, it isn't that, but she's pregnant, right? When I came by and offered my arm to her, she said that she was really grateful anyone came along to help her. I don't care what excuses you have, you laid a hand on my Sandy! You have no idea the kind of enemy that you just made! Wait, David, please, just talk to your wife and ask her what happened. I'm sure she'll explain everything. I swear that I only helped her climb the stairs, and that was it. Please calm down. You don't get to tell me to calm down, you homewrecker! I'm not going to let you get away with this! You'll pay! I'll make you pay! I just can't catch a break with you. <coughs> Have you actually lost your mind, David? You kicked me! That's assault! Don't you realize what you've done? Oh shoot, did I leave you alive? I was hoping that after you fell down all those stairs that you at least wouldn't be waking up for a good long while. You didn't even have the guts to look me in the eye when you attacked. You chose to come at me from behind. You're saying you don't think I'm tough enough to take you? Just why would I waste any energy on a guy like you who made a pass at my wife? For the last time, I was only helping her to get up the stairs. I'm sure she's explained what happened to you already, right? You listen here. I don't want you coming near us ever again, got it? Do it again and there'll be an even worse punishment in store for you. And I won't stop pounding you until you've learned your lesson. Next time you come near my wife, I'll kick your teeth in. I don't care if we go way back, nobody touches my wife but me! You won't get away with this. I will make you pay. <laughs> you wish. I can't believe you, man. Who do you think you are coming to my house, huh? Did you not get enough of me last time? You said you were friends with criminals, right? Why don't you go ahead and get your gang and come at me? 
<laughs> Wait, what? You mean that you want me to bring my whole crew to come against you solo? You just wait right there, you little punk. Wait, hold on, are you here with your own crew? What do you mean, what crew? I mean, who are all these people that just showed up at my house? What the heck are all these people doing here? I have no idea what you're talking about, but just come outside. We have lots to talk about what you did yesterday. There's no way I'm gonna go outside right now. You brought a whole freaking army with you. An army? These aren't just some random thugs. I've interviewed all these guys. Interviews? What are you talking about, man? You interviewed all these guys just to come and get your revenge? Can you calm down already? All these people are employees at my company. I had another employee of mine at the reunion who watched what happened and refused to let this slide. What kind of company are you running where you have so many buff, scary-looking guys? Well, I own my own construction company, so... So I think you understand why I look for people that can handle that kind of work, of course. But, but why do you have to bring them all to my house? Why can't you just bring someone from, like, accounting or something? I really didn't bring these guys with me. But that one employee who saw what you did to me insisted that I have some people with me if I go talk to you. They all came with me of their own volition. Well, I still can't just walk outside. You need to tell your cronies to get lost or else I'll call the police. The police? Why would you call them? Why not just call your crew over here? What's that supposed to mean? I mean that you're always talking about how you run with a pretty tough crowd, right? So then don't bother calling the cops. Just call your boys and let's settle this. How does that sound? Uh, uh, no, I, I can't do that. I mean, what kind of gangster is going to run to the police when they have perfectly healthy cronies? Look, all I want to do is have a little talk and pretend like all the people aren't even here. What kind of godfather way is that to go about this? You think we can talk like this? I don't want to get my kneecaps broken. Look, just come out here and we'll talk, okay? You can pay for the medical bills or I'll sue you. How does that sound? You, you can't really expect me to go outside, do you? I can hear some voices coming from inside your house. Is that Sandy? It sounds like the two of you are fighting about something. I told you to keep my wife's name out your freaking mouth! You don't need to concern yourself about anything going on inside here, okay? Well, you can say that all you want, but we are still old classmates, and it's not like she's a total stranger. Oh, wait, Sandy's coming out of the house right now. Hey, what the heck are the two of you talking about? Well, she came out to apologize for what you did to me yesterday. This is just sad, David. Your wife has nothing to do with this, and she's coming out and apologizing for you. Oh, she just said she wants to go into town. I wonder where she's going. This is all your fault. You did this. She told me that she was going to her parents' house and she was walking out the door. I think she might be wanting to get a divorce now. You ruined my marriage. And just how is any of this my fault? You were the one who acted like a complete idiot yesterday. Shut up. Just shut up. You turned her against me. She was never going to do this to me until you came along. Oh, give me a break. You know that's not what happened. All I did was help your pregnant wife get up some stairs. And just where were you? Isn't that your job to be there for her? How could you just leave your poor pregnant wife to get around by herself like that? But I, uh, I had no idea that she was having trouble getting around. But of course if I knew I would have helped her. <laughs> I'm not that bad of a husband, <laughs> right? And just why did you feel the need to kick me down the stairs like that? If you wanted to be a good husband, then the least you could have done was confront me and talk to me like an actual adult. If you get divorced, then you will only have yourself to be blamed. But uh, you used to be my slave! How dare you talk to me like this! If you have something to say about it, then why don't you come out and face me like a man? Call your boys or not. I really don't care anymore. You no, know, I've had enough of this! Just go home! You've already done enough damage already! You don't have any connections to any kind of gangs at all, do you? I... you just shut up! You know what everyone was talking about behind your back at the reunion, right? They were all saying that you're just a giant man-child. I mean, do you think that anyone really believes you have gang connections? You've never once said the name of the gang or given any specifics. You mean that everyone was really talking about me like that? Of course they were. Are you starting to get the picture about how people really feel about you? Don't you dare talk to me like this, you little punk! You're hated by all your classmates. You drove your own wife away, and now you're going to be fired. How does that make you feel? I assume you've heard of my company, Terra Construction, right? Wait, your company is Terra? But that's the company that my job is working with. That's right. Although I know that in your company, you're not really tied to the project in it anyway. But I'm afraid that I still can't abide by working with a company that allows their employees to go around assaulting people. So consider this my way of telling you that you're going to be fired. 
Wait, no, please, you gotta forgive me! I had no idea that you worked for Terra at all! Sorry, I think you misunderstood. I don't work for Terra Construction, I own and run it. Then please, you have to talk to my company and convince them to keep me on! You're right, I lied about knowing all those gang members, I'm sorry, please forgive me! I'm sorry, but I've already filed my complaint with your work. Begging me won't do anything for you now. You're kidding me! How could you do that?! Anyways, I guess I'll just go home. I've already said what I came here to say to you. Please don't ever contact me again. You jerk! <laughs> Ugh, I'm in so much pain. What did you do? I really didn't think that you were going to try and attack me from behind again. And with a metal pipe in your hand, no less. Just what were you going to try and do to me with that, huh? What? What do you mean? Just who are you? You know, after we both finished school, I decided that I was tired of being your whipping boy. After graduation, I started taking judo classes as a way to help me build up my self-confidence. Now I actually teach classes in my spare time. I guess you could say that I've gotten pretty good at it. You? You learned judo because I was bullying you? That's right, and judo has more than prepared me for attacks from behind. I knew that you were coming up from behind me even at the class reunion. You've got to be kidding me! You, you're supposed to be a weakling! No, oh, I was. I can certainly admit that. In fact, even these days, I never go out looking for excuses to use my judo on people. Unlike you, I don't find joy in acting violently toward people and forcing them to obey me. I guess I just grew up and you didn't. Uh, fine, you win, okay? I I'm so sorry for everything. Now can you please just help me? I was gonna throw you down the stairs again, but now I'm stuck at the bottom. I've fallen and I can't get up! Oh, maybe you should try calling on your wife for help. Oh, wait. <laughs> After that, I called the police, reported David's attempted assault, and waited at the top of the stairs where I threw David down for them to arrive. I explained that I acted in self-defense, pointing to the pipe that David was carrying as evidence. We agreed to settle things out of court, and he had to pay quite a bit before I agreed not to sue him. He also ended up divorcing his wife and had to pay her in alimony as well. I can't imagine it was fun having to lose so much money after just being fired from your job. But he can't really blame anyone but himself. Thankfully, I was able to continue my business with David's old company as they agreed to fire him, and our joint project is soon to be completed.